but also you learn a lot of um, what's called psychoacoustics, which is kind of the psychology of how the brain processes sound. Yeah. What core cool things or discoveries did you have you like found out? You know, things can sound totally different to different people. That blows my mind. And like, mm. even from where, so the way that your your head and face is shaped affects how you hear sound. Ooh. So basically, we are more attuned to kind of mid to high frequencies than any other frequency. Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for stopping by to watch this video. I'm starting a new segment of my channel called STEM Talks and today I have an amazing guest. She's going to introduce you to herself. She's going to tell you a little, about, a little bit about herself, what she studied and stuff like that. So yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Um, so my name is Kels. Uh, I am a audio engineer. My undergraduate degree was in audio engineering from the School of Sound Recording. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been an audio engineer for about five years now, um, although I only graduated from my degree this year. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that I can tell you. Um, yeah, kind of my background is more in live sound engineering, but I also do studio sound. And then also my undergraduate dissertation, which I think you wanted me to talk a little bit about, was um, in based in music information retrieval as well. Okay, fab. Thank you. Um, we're going to touch on the dissertation in just a second because that is super exciting. I just wanted to know what inspired you at a young age to do audio engineering because a lot of us, uh, let's say 18 or 17, had no idea what I wanted to do. So what was it that sparked your interest for audio engineering? Um, I actually got into audio in a really roundabout way. Um, I loved physics. I really wanted to do a degree in physics. Um, and then all through school, I was really musical. I played a lot of different instruments. Um, and that was kind of like my, my hobby and my passion. Um, and when I actually went to sixth form, um, I didn't do anything musical. Um, I, they didn't offer a music A-level or anything like that. So I carried on with all my, all my physics and then realised that I actually really missed music. Wow. Um, and my original plan had been to study uh, physics with astrophysics. Wow. And I realised that I just missed music too much. And I kind of wanted to, I wanted to do something really sciencey, yeah. but I wanted to have that kind of like, little bit of my hobby in there my like personal interest so yeah I kind of looked into what I could do um and realized that you know audio engineering is actually a lot more scientific than people think um and that was kind of my path into it I looked at some different uni courses and and that was kind of I'd done some audio engineering on the side as well um before I'd got into uni so um yeah it kind of was just I found it and kind of realized it was perfect. Fabulous, thank you. Um, so like you said, it's a lot more sciencey than what you thought it was. So um, what exactly, like what sort of things did you learn within audio engineering, like any technical stuff, any non-technical stuff? So like what sort of things do you learn as part of your degree? Um, I think something that is really overlooked with audio engineers is actually you are still an engineer you do still have to know a lot of maths and, and science um and i think that's something that most people just don't realize um we had to work with you know it's all sound wave theory so you work with a lot of um kind of acoustics you work with things like harmonics um you do a lot of um even things like um, when you're working with microphones you have to place them in certain ways um, and that all comes back to the maths behind sound which is um, something that most people don't realize but also you learn a lot of um, what's called psychoacoustics which is kind of the psychology of how the brain processes sound wow. um, I didn't really realize that that was such a huge part of um, of audio engineering um, but that's super interesting. You learn a lot about the way that the brain processes sound, how um, you can kind of change sound um, and change the way that sound is perceived for people. Um, and that's kind of like at the core of audio engineering because kind of what you're trying to do at the end of the day is make things sound good to people. So there's a lot of manipulation that you can do that you wouldn't even kind of 
think was possible, which is really, really interesting. Um, and then also kind of the last sort of branch of, of audio engineering is the music side. So you learn a lot about kind of the way that um, music is, is um, made really from start to finish. And you learn so many people skills as well because um, you're constantly working with other people, no matter what branch of audio you're working in, um, mm. you, you learn a lot of soft skills as well. Fab, thank you. Um, could you tell us some like cool facts that would like blow our minds in regards to music? Because you said there's like some things that you didn't realize are uh, like is like encompasses making music. Like what cool things or discoveries did you have you like found out? Uh, you've put me on the spot now. I'm sure there's plenty. Um, I'm trying like to think. How the brain works and stuff like that. Like how anything super cool that you found fascinating. Yeah, I mean like. Um, I think, the, you know, things can sound totally different to different people. That blows my mind. And like, mm. even from where, so the way that your, your head and face is shaped affects how you hear sound. Mm. So um, we have something called binaural hearing, which basically just means we have two ears on the side yeah. of our head. Mm. Um, and that is such an advanced and sophisticated kind of way of hearing, um, yeah. of being able to place um sounds all the way around your head you can you know whether they're in front of you or behind you you know pretty much exactly where they are yeah. um, which all comes down to the way that sounds reflect off your face and your head and yeah. uh, the different um the ways that the, the sound waves kind of bounce off say the back of your head is flat whereas the front of your face is you know you've got your nose and your mouth which kind of absorb sound in a different way wow. so that's how the brain kind of registers where things are or um you know the way the ears are shaped to shape to cup sound in so you can hear better um so i find that like super interesting yeah, I find that is actually really interesting. And even for me, I've got a MacBook and the speakers on it make the music sound different. Like mm. I haven't had the same experience with any other sort of audio player, but I don't know what's in the Mac that the music sounds, it sounds sweeter to my ears. So yeah, that's that's quite interesting. I just thought I'd point that out. But um, this is just a really weird question, but would you recommend any sort of speakers or earphones to heighten our like listening experience of music like what should we look out for when we're buying like earphones or speakers because they make a massive difference to how you experience music so how can we capitalize off that um i think one of the things that um i definitely look for in a speaker is having like a closed back so that basically means that your your um the cup of the speaker fits kind of like entirely over your ear mm. um and that kind of cuts out it kind of blocks the noise yeah. um it's kind of you can also get them coupled with like noise cancelling headphones which yeah. are great um but i definitely look for something that can kind of block out the noise and allow you to focus on what you're hearing um yeah especially with like studio work a lot of sound engineers invest a lot of money into speakers and headphones yeah. um just to really get the best listening experience to make sure that you are hearing everything there possibly is to hear in a track. Yeah. Um, the one brand that I always, always, uh, I think every sound engineer ever would tell you to avoid is um, Beats. Really? Because, yeah. So they are like super bass boosted. So it distorts yeah. the sound um, of, Ooh. of whatever you're listening to. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's, there's something called a Fletcher Munson curve. This is going like really deep nerdy. Um, we, it. we love it. It basically is the way that the human ear responds to sound. Ooh. So basically we are more attuned to kind of mid to high frequencies than any other frequency, because that's, a, that's the frequency that we communicate at. Um, you know, we're more attuned to, say the sound of a baby crying or you know kind of the natural frequency of of another human's voice yeah and we are to say you know um really high pitch sounds um or really low pitch sounds so if you look for a headphone that kind of replicates that curve 
um, you will, it kind of heightens your listening experience because it kind of boosts the areas that we don't hear as well. So the slightly lower frequencies and it will sort of mediate those, those high mids and, and almost the low mids as well, where we kind of have a really attuned sense of hearing. So um, there's a lot of science that goes into this um, that you wouldn't even think of. Um, it really is a, a crazy industry. Um, but I, I am, you know, a sucker for a good headphone and a good set of speakers. <laughs> I mean, I'm not an audio engineer, but I, if the quality of the um, earphones are bad, it, it ruins my listening experience. So it's quite interesting. You talked about beats. What about, um, Bose? Have you, how do you know much about Bose? I am a fan of Bose. Um, they really have that like listening technology, um, yeah. kind of down. They spend a lot of money on research and development and they are probably one of the leading brands of non-professional headphones. Okay. Uh, and I think as well, it's important to distinguish between professional and non-professional headphones because unless you're an audio engineer, you really don't need a, a professional pair of headphones or a professional set of speakers because yeah. Really, you're listening for something else when you're an audio engineer. You're listening for those flaws to fix them and, and all those little tiny things that most people wouldn't even recognize. Yeah. Um, whereas on, on kind of non-professional speakers, you can look for things that actually enhance the listening experience rather than kind of expose the flaws. Yeah. Um, so uh, as much as I kind of, you know, um, hate on beats they are designed for a specific purpose you know uh, Dr Dre made those to listen to his music yeah which you know it boosts the bass because that's what you want when you're listening to that genre of music you want the heavy bass and you want to hear the rapping and you know it's less about the melody because it you know you're you more want that kind of driving bass and that feeling of listening to the music yeah and that kind of sums up non-professional headphones is they can be um really tailored to the genre of music that you listen to um off the top of my head for example kit sound is a a brand of headphones that are made for jazz music and if that's your genre they're going to be great for that but as a professional you know i wouldn't use them to mix with yeah. um so i think it's really about like doing your research and um really thinking about what genres you listen to the most what you enjoy what you want from the sound um yeah. And also a great little hack is most um, most devices now, phones and laptops, mm -hmm. um, have their own EQs on them. So you can kind of attune your own sound. Spotify Premium now has an EQ feature. So if you love bass heavy music, yeah. you could you could turn that up, you know, you can turn the bass up. Or if you um, hate the kind of, if you're thinking things are sounding a bit tinny, you can bring the higher frequencies down. Yeah. Really just kind of play with and make your own sound, which is an amazing feature that kind of really excites me as an audio engineer. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Wow, thank you for that. It's really, really informative. Um, on to the next thing. So I want you to talk a little bit about your dissertation because that sounded so exciting. <laughs> yes, yeah, so my dissertation is in... Uh, it's based on a topic called music information retrieval, which is basically the meeting of um, audio engineering and music science um, and kind of more of the like computer science side of things. Um, it is actually, it does include things like psychoacoustics and physics as well. Um, but my specific dissertation was looking at the way that we could use um, machine learning um, and kind of recurrent neural networks um, to identify chords in a song. Um, so for example, you would play a song and the computer would tell you what order the chords were in and where they were played. Um, it's been a problem that, you know, music information retrieval has looked at for a long time because it, it can potentially save a lot of time and a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and it does look at things like, um, for example, I know a lot of guitar players use ultimate guitar yeah. um every single piece of tab or um chord diagram on there has been made by a human which is hours and hours of time yeah um, and to be able to generate that automatically with any song would be very powerful in the music industry wow interesting 
that's really cool. Um, I was thinking of something really cool. I was thinking, like, is it possible, like, you know, all the top hits that are there, mm-hmm. is it possible to, like, do an algorithm to see what's common in those beats and then make a song out of the, like, common features that make the beats popular? Do you reckon that's possible? I think definitely for sure, analysing them to see what's kind of common in all of them Mm -hmm. um, is possible. Like, that is kind of what I'm doing with my dissertation. Um, In terms of you can look at, like, the BPM or the rhythm of the um, beats, you know, whether you were focusing on, say, like, the drums or the chords or, you know, the things that make them really catchy. But in terms of actually making a song this is something that's like a really hot topic of debate at the moment in this industry because there are computer programs that can make music um they're they're generally quite um rudimentary like they're not they probably aren't going to make you know a massive a classical piece of music or you know an opera but they do make you know they fulfill their purpose they can make basic songs and um how complicated they will get i don't know it's definitely a moral debate of um you know are we putting people out of work um by making music with computers are we taking away that nuance and that um kind of emotion And can a computer write a song that's as emotional um, or, you know, has as much feeling as as a human can? Because a lot of music, um, particularly modern music, is based around, you know, love or heartbreak or all these different emotions that we feel. And could a computer ever understand that? And it's it's this huge topic of debate because we don't know, really, um, because we're kind of... Although we've had all these massive leaps and bounds in machine learning and kind of artificial intelligence, we're still quite, we're relatively at the beginning and we don't know how far this is going to go. But it's very, very interesting. Um, It's something that I am very interested in to see if it is possible. Um, It's certainly a very rapidly developing area of computer science. Um, And you know what, like I feel like what you just proposed probably can be done and probably will be done soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Um, I, cause I, that was something I was thinking about being able to analyze all the popular music, picking mm. out the bits that make it popular and then just getting the computer like an algorithm, machine learning to create something of a popular beat. But, you know, just my thoughts. But yeah, thank you for that additional information, very informative. Um, Also, I wanted to know, what extracurricular activities have you done? So you mentioned some concert work, um, some working in a bar, helping with the audio. So please um, explore and tell us more. Um, So when I was in my first year at university, I actually set up my own freelance business as an audio engineer. Wow. Um, So I started working kind of like around different bars and clubs um my university was in manchester and i am still based in manchester so um it was a great music scene to kind of get involved in um i would do random jobs at first just like anything that i could get my hands on um i just wanted to like really be in the environment because i just love what i did so i just would do all these random shows i have been in clubs at like three in the morning where everyone's really really drunk and I'm completely sober and I'm just sat there with a sound desk um it's it can be quite strange sometimes um but at the moment I work at a bar called Martin Fred's which is like a jazz club um I love it there it's one of the best jobs I've ever had honestly um it really is just really cool you work with different musicians every night everyone's super talented um But yeah, and then also alongside that, I did some studio work. So um, I worked with quite a few bands, produced an EP, um, that kind of thing, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of other things I've done. Oh, I um, actually did festival season last year as well, which was, that was so cool. Really? Um, I was just traveling like for, I think it was about 12 weeks of festival season last summer. I was just traveling to different festivals and like, um, I was at Kendall Calling. I worked at Cotton Clouds as well in Manchester. Um, I did some festivals in Wales. 
So I was kind of just like traveling everywhere and just working all over the country, which was something that I felt incredibly lucky to be able to do. Um, and it was just super cool. Like to get paid to um, go to a festival is kind of like a bit mind blowing. I was, it was crazy to be in that situation, but it's, it's such a fun environment. Yeah. Did they um, pay for your expenses and hotels and stuff like that? So free entry and you got paid and you got accommodation and stuff included. Yeah. What a life. So, um, yeah, pretty much like when you work at a festival, they will um, pay for you to travel there. They'll pay for you. Well, you get free entry. Um, and the great thing about being at a festival, I, I think, is when you're not on shift, you can do whatever you want. So, um i got to see some amazing bands um all for free because i was working there so that is like a, a huge perk of of um being in in kind of working in the music industry um and because i love live music anyway it was just it was it was really surreal because it was my first ever festival season wow. and i was like wow this is this is really crazy that people are just like letting me do this <laughs> that's so cool so um have you managed to work with any of your favorite brands or like, you know, when you're working with them, it must be pretty cool just to like, be like, oh my God, that's a famous person. I'm here like sorting out their audio. Like what's it like working with these bands? And like, how do you, like, have you met anyone like important or special or just been like, wow, like, yeah. Yeah, I, um, I've had a few moments, especially at the kind of start of my career, mm -hmm. I would get really like, starstruck and yeah. especially when I was working with people whose music I loved um you know I was I just would get quite shy um <laughs> and I try and like play it really cool mm -hmm. um I remember one of one of the first bands that I worked with was Elbow who were like a huge Manchester band and um I remember kind of like being stood there and mm -hmm. I was like, wow, these guys are like super famous. And, <laughs> and, then, and then you sort of panic because you're like, they're really famous and they've got loads of fans. And if I mess this up, I'm, I'm in trouble. <laughs> um, yeah, I think especially when you work the bigger festivals and you get those, um, those headliners. And sometimes like I worked with um, Peter Hook, who is from Joy Division and New Order. Okay. And they're like, Ooh. I love both those bands mm -hmm. and he arrived and I was like oh my god this is crazy and I think especially when you're not um mm -hmm. so a lot of people don't know this but there's lots of different types of audio engineers yeah and unless you're like the main mixing engineer which is called the front of house engineer mm -hmm. they're in the crowd but everyone else is on stage so I was stood at the sides of the stage watching this this musician who I've loved since I was you know a kid yeah and it was one of those real like surreal moments where you're like wow I get to watch this band from the side of the stage and like yeah you know you're so close to them and you get to talk to them and meet them and that's that's really cool um but it is a really cool experience but then sometimes now I'm like I meet famous people and you just realize that they kind of are just people yeah um, and you actually, it's really nice to just like talk to them in a, in a normal capacity and just kind of get to know them behind the, uh, the kind of facade of, of them being a famous musician. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So yeah, that sounds fantastic. Great. Um, so where, where, where do you see yourself in the future? Like, do you see yourself continue to doing festivals? What other weird and wonderful things have you got planned for your career? Um, so this is actually like I think a really interesting question for a lot of audio engineers because it's one of those careers where you can kind of sort of age out of the career um especially with live sound is definitely like a young person's game um not that you can't do it um you know there's not like a cutoff point but you do a lot of traveling you don't yeah. really sleep very much you're kind of living on a tour bus you're away from home um, so I definitely, as much as I kind of love that lifestyle and yeah. really want to kind of like do it as long as possible, yeah. um, I definitely have a backup plan. Um, so 
I would love to do some more touring when the industry kind of gets back to normal. Um, and then, yeah, like my plan after that, I still have plans to do a master's degree and I'd really like to do a PhD as well in um, music information retrieval. I'm working more with the computer science side of things. Um, it's a industry at the moment, especially with like, the Amazon Alexa and kind of Google Home and all these different smart speakers that are coming into the market. That's a huge area of um, of music information retrieval. Um, so yeah, I kind of my plan is to keep doing what I'm doing now, um, but maybe kind of move that to a, a freelance kind of on the side thing whilst I focus on more research. I'd love to work in kind of academia um, and do some research. I think that would be really cool as well. Okay, that's exciting. Um, so, yeah, what advice would you give to anyone considering going into audio engineering, um, in particular girls? Um, so, yeah, what would you advise for women and girls who are looking to go into audio engineering? Um, I think, like, the first thing that I would say is definitely understand what it entails. Um, in my university course we had a really high dropout rate because we had loads of people who thought it was going to be like a music course or mm. you know it was going to be that like rock and roll lifestyle and yeah. it definitely can be but you you do have to actually do some learning yeah. um and there is some you know it is a hard, hard course um it's not just kind of a DOS out or anything like that yeah. you know you, there is a lot of math and a lot of science involved which a lot of people again don't realize um but yeah aside from that I'd say like persevere with it um I think it can have some real highs and lows you know yeah. one day you might be working you know side of main stage and with really famous musicians and you'll be like oh my god this is amazing and then the next you might you know be breaking a stage at four in the morning or you know um you could be doing something way less interesting than than mixing mixing is only a tiny percentage of the job um so it's kind of one of those things where there's lots of ups and downs but it's a really rewarding career and definitely like stick at it and persevere yeah um, it's so worth it and then I think especially for women and girls who want to be an audio engineer, like don't let the industry put you off. Like, I'm not going to lie. It can be really horrible. I've had loads of, you know, horrible things happen to me. Mm. And there aren't very many women in the music industry. Um, the number is growing. Mm. But, you know, it is a very male dominated industry, like a lot of, of STEM industries. Yeah. But, find the female community because we are amazing <laughs> i've met so many female engineers um you know female tour managers production managers tech managers um and everyone wants to help you because we all see that there's you know there is an issue with underrepresentation in this industry yeah but we are really good at our jobs and i think our engineers um, kind of bring this diversity you know if if you are sat in a room full of men you kind of get the male opinion right you add women in yeah. um, you kind of get that mixed opinion you know 50% of the world are female and yeah. your opinion is definitely valid mm. um, so I think getting that representation is really key so stick it out like um, mm. you might have moments that are going to be less than perfect but there are so many people who will back you and who will help you, um, especially at the start of your career, because it can be quite a difficult industry to start out in. But once you kind of have yourself set up, um, you'll be fine. Fabulous. Well, that's great. Thank you for that advice. And um, I think that's it, really. I think all the questions done. Um, I'd like to say thank you so much, Kelsey, for joining us for your my first guest thank speaker. Thank you for having me of my <laughs> called STEM Talks. Um, I hope that there are many women and girls in particular who will be inspired by this. Um, I, was, I was honestly inspired when you first told me about this. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Kelsey. And I wish you the best in your future endeavor endeavors. Um, so yeah, guys. So thank you guys for watching this YouTube video. Today I had the guest 
speaker, Kelsey, an amazing audio engineer. And if you guys want more content like this, make sure you like, subscribe, share and comment. And I'll be back with another video. Bye.